Hey, hey everyone, it's Sleepy Reader, AKA Damien. Um, this is another uh, weird unboxing video. Today I got in the mail this huge box uh, with assorted things mailed to me by my mom, um, including a bunch of comics and also a bunch of art I made as a kid. I'm gonna actually look at the art I made as a kid in another video, but I thought I would look through the comic book part of the box on a video with you. So I've only glanced at kind of the top layer. I'm not sure what will be in here, but I already was kind of surprised and thought all those comics had been sold when I was a kid. Um, and some of them may be ones I recollected, I suppose, in my very early, in my college days. Um, but I think some of them go back to my childhood. And anyway, it's weird because my mom has sold my childhood house and because of the COVID virus, I was not able to go back there and help her clean it up. She's, she lives in Connecticut, I live in Oregon. She did not want me flying to visiting her and picking up germs along the way and spreading it around the um, retirement community that she's moved into. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing to think of my childhood home is now gone and I didn't get to sort through all the stuff. And she, in her mid eighties, was really not able to go through everything. So I'm actually very lucky she got me this heavy box. I think my, my brother who does live nearby helped her pack it up and mail it. So um, let's see what's some other leftovers from my childhood, see what they look like. Okay, here we go. Um, I seem to remember my parents encouraging me to get into stamp collecting at some point. Probably hoping, I think they thought it would be more educational than some of my other interests like comics and science fiction. But I don't think I got very far in my stamp collecting. Well, there's one page. Kids get stamps from. I think my, you know my uncle traveled a lot, and he may have sent me some stuff. But um, yeah, I I don't remember spending too much time on the stamp collecting. I'm actually surprised that there's even a few in here. Um, although that's a cool cover, I can see why I might have liked that. Spaceman on the cover. This one, Pioneer album. Um, oh look at that! There's a bunch of stamps. Maybe you can buy stamps. They seem to be postmarked. Oh well, I really don't remember a whole lot about that. Maybe I can ask my mom, but she probably won't remember either. She tends not to remember much about my childhood, which I don't really blame her, because your children grow up and they keep changing and you have to keep up with them. And one memory erases the other. Oh, Superman salutes the bicentennial. I was big in the comics while the Bicentennial was going on. I can well remember that. But I don't think I was too excited about Superman. I had the Bicentennial, Captain America Bicentennial Battles, but I assume I don't still have that. I'm guessing what's left is of my old comics is what didn't sell to the dealer who came to my house when I was 16. and, and picked through all my comics. Oh, look at that. I wrote Inhumans number four on here. And 9P, did I buy this when I was in Switzerland? I got British comics there. And we did briefly visit England. The weird thing is the way I have wrapped these, they seem to be wrapped. Are they wrapped in bags? What kind of bags are these? Comic book's not too valuable, so I probably should get scissors or something. Or is this just... Oh, that's scary. But I have no fear this comic's not, not destroying the value of the comic. You know what? I'm going to pause it. I have no idea. Did I wrap these up maybe in the circa 1980, or did I actually do this in the 70s? I don't think I knew anything about it. And obviously, I didn't know very much about how to protect comics. I don't think I even had the concept of trying to protect your comics back then. Inside 
art on this. This is gonna be a long video if I'm with George Perez, early George Perez. That sounds kind of exciting. I forgot that he was on the Inhumans. So all of this stuff seems to be wrapped in this cellophane-like stuff. I definitely remember this issue. I loved the Juggernaut. It's probably... This is the uh, reprint era of the X-Men. Probably like a... Um, I what was his name. He's an angry artist who did a lot of X-Men art. That was disappointing, but anyway. I guess I can't open all of these up for me. This video will be three hours long. So they must have put new covers on them, and then it is Werner Roth. That's the name I was trying to remember. You know, that's kind of a cool, cool layout to a splash page. So yeah, this was th this was where I learned about the X-Men in these X-Men reprint things. Luke Cage, Power Man, number 20. It's funny that I wrote it right on there. I'm not sure what I thought the point of that was. Uh, Fighting Black Goliath, Gil Kane cover. Hero for Hire. Oh, the famous Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom issue. I did not know I even had this. I've read about people talking about it, and I thought I'd never read it, but I probably did read it. More reprint X-Men. I don't know if I even knew they were reprints then. I don't think I did. That's a cool cover. That might be... Is that the original cover? I'm not sure. <clears throat> More Juggernaut. I really liked the Juggernaut, and I still do. I hope the new Juggernaut series that they're about to have now will turn out to be good. It's got Ron, gonna have Ron Gunning art. Okay, Thor. Look at that. What's this bag that I wrapped in it? Marvel Multimax. Four bags for 99 cents. I don't think that's where how I got these comics, but I must have gotten some Marvel Marvel multi bags at some point. Um Wow. I did not remember I had this stuff. Oh, there's my favorite issue of Commandy. Um, what was her name? Flower? Or was it was this another name like that? Oh, Demon. Demon. So I recollected all this stuff. All right, so I have multiple issues now. <clears throat> I didn't even remember that I was that into loot. I mean, I liked, I remember liking Luke Cage a lot, but I didn't realize, I'd forgotten I got a lot of Luke Cage issues. Now, was this, this was a new number one, but I forgot all about this series. Must have been in the 71, 72. Oh, it's a Storenko cover even. Doesn't even look like Storenko. And there's another one. But what was inside these? I'm going to open up one of these. I think they might have been reprints of Jack Kirby shield, but I'm not sure. Where did I, where did I get this, these bags? mishandling comics. I was very fascinated by the way Starenko drew these muscles with the lines on them and the lots of rows of muscles. <laughs> Maybe a little more than actually exist, but you know, lots of people do that. Yeah, yeah, it's um it's reprints. Huh. Interesting that they would reprint the Jack Kirby mags with Jim Starenko. Is this the first, is this the cover of the first Starenko issue? Kirby Starenko, inked by Starenko. Is it Starenko or Starenko? Oh, yep, and I got a lot. So a lot of my comic buying in the 70s was reprint comics, and often I didn't know it. Uh, like these uh, Marvel superheroes that reprinted, what was the original series that had the Hulk and Submariner in it? Can't even remember for sure. Tales of Suspense, maybe. Oh, here's Black uh, Daredevil and Black Widow, 100. Nine Storm. That's a great cover by John Romita, I believe. Or is it? Could it be Don Heck? Maybe a combination of the two. It has a, a face looked a bit Don Heckish. 
Yep. Oh, 132. Doc Savage. <laughs> I've just recollected these Doc Savage comics. Yeah, I was a sucker for the Storenko covers. Here they all are. That's funny. I didn't think, I did not think that I would ever see these again. I think I've recollected this comic. I remember this, this was probably, I'm guessing, the first Marvel team up I got. And I remember thinking it was super exciting and I loved Morbius as a pseudo villain. Spider-Man and the Cat. Oh, that's a great cover. Is that Bermuda or someone else? I can't say for sure. Yeah. He's bringing back str strange feelings of memories. <clears throat> Team up. Of course, when you're a kid, you're going to want a lot of Marvel team up. Ooh. I loved Warlock. This version, of course, was eclipsed by the um, Jim Starlin version of Warlock, but I loved Warlock. And I know that I. He was in Marvel Premiere at first. I remembered I had the Marvel Premiere issues. I did not remember that I had the. Um, Regular ones, superhero, supervillain team up, cool cover, that Rich Buckler, yep, it says Buckler Sinet right on there. I've got to look through the camera and make sure the glare is not too bad. Guard <laughs> Another British one, British variant, probably means I bought it in Switzerland, British variant. P. That's not a great cover, but no, it's okay. Ooh, Man Thing. I was pretty fascinated by the Man Thing. I don't know if I knew very much about the Swamp Thing. I read a lot of the Man Thing. Comics. Captain Marvel. Speaking of Jim Starlin, is this Jim Starlin at this point? I'm not sure. It's a cover by Gil Kane. Maybe it's Gil Kane on the inside. Plastic. You know, I had more comics than I realized when I was a kid. Ooh, the Defenders. I well remember having a Defenders subscription. This doesn't look like a subscription copy, so maybe this is one I got before I started my subscription. And I think this was my... I enjoyed the Silver Surfer as part of the team a lot for some reason. And the... I just like the whole collection of oddball characters. Spider-Man. Oh my. These are all bent now from the way they were packed by my mom and my brother. I think these Spider-Man comics might have been my brothers. I'm not positive. He, um, he was a bigger Spider-Man fan than me, but he wasn't really that big of a comic book fan, but I convinced him to ask for comic books for comic book subscriptions for his for Christmas. So I think he got Spider-Man. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. The turning point. Huh. I always assumed I got I feel like I got this comic when there was a year when we lived in Hawaii when I was twelve. Or no, I was eleven. And uh I always thought I had read this as a, in the reprint. Maybe not. Oh, someone changed the price to 35 cents there. <laughs> Holy cow, I did not know I had these. Giant size Spider-Man and Master of Kung Fu. Now, I thought I'd read everything, all of my Spider-Mans in Marvel Tales, actually. funny if there was the first Punisher appearance in here. I'm not expecting that. Ah, I remember reading that issue when I was a kid. That cover does not ring a bell. Oh, I think there's going to be the first Punisher in here. Did we come back around? Yeah, I think we have. 
Okay. <clears throat> well, that is perfectly fine. Yeah, look at that quality bag. No boards. Who'd ever heard of boards? More defenders. I really love the defenders. I wonder if I, I've been recollecting the defenders, so some of these issues I've definitely bought in recent days. Oop, another Jim Steranko cover. I've also rebrought this one recently. I'm trying to collect all the thongors. I still have a few left, but maybe these will fill my holes. Although, thongors, <laughs> the art on the inside is a little dicey. Submariner? Special origin issue. I think I bought this in the past year or two also. The cat, claws of the cat. The man bull. I don't know, the man bull always struck me as one of the creepiest, disturbing villains. I'm not sure why. Captain America. I definitely rebought a whole bunch of Captain America, so whatever I've got here. I've probably now bought twice. Oh, Fantastic Four. I think this is during the Rich Buckler days, although I don't think that's a Rich Buckler cover. It's hard to see if there's a Rich Buckler signature. Let's go right here. Double bagging. Boo! I definitely remember somehow I got a hold of this. It would have been an old comic, i.e four or five years old when I got a hold of this when I was living in Switzerland. I remember spending a lot of time um, I, I must there must have been an old bookstore somewhere in Geneva where I was living in Switzerland that had these comics. Um, so that would have been subscriptions, the upside down cross. Nice. Starting Guardians of the Galaxy. That should make it worth a lot of money. And I am totally, I'm totally shocked by what I'm finding here. I just did not think that uh, that uh, these comics remained within my mom's house all these years, up in the attic. Wrapped in this plastic up in that uninsulated attic. That's scary. That was a cool issue. I remember. I remember that. It might be George Perez art on the inside or Buckler. In the 25 cent era, I was, I was an old man by the time these came out. <clears throat> oh, remember when Power Man joined the Fantastic Four? Yeah, I think a lot of these are probably George Perez art on the inside. Jack Kirby cover. I like now collecting the Jack Kirby covers. They're not expensive from the 70s. Jack Kirby cover. I don't remember this issue. Really. Torgo. Was Torgo the robot he had to, f Ben Grimm had to fight in that weird um, Jack Kirby, later Jack Kirby, Fantastic Four? Where there were, it was like days of the mob in outer space, like ripping off some uh, Star Trek episode, kind of. Mr. Impossible, or the Impossible Man. I'm pretty sure that was a George Perez issue. I wonder what I was thinking with my label on everything. Okay, well, lots of fantastic four. Let's see here. Oh, Monster of the Lost Lagoon. Yeah, this is another one that I somehow found at a bookstore in Switzerland. I forgot all about this stuff, but but now I can I can picture the apartment we lived in in Geneva and me poring over these fantastic four books. Oh, two books wrapped together. I can worry about that right now. issue where Reed zaps his own son, I think. Oh, and Darkoth, the death demon. That was a good rich buckler, period. 
I wonder if I, when I look closer at these, if I'll find subscription increases. Some of these, I think, came when I had a subscription to the Fantastic Four. So all of this stuff, I guess, at this period of Fantastic Four was kind of just repeating Kirby and Lee storylines, but I didn't know that, and I loved them. Um, and it was ripping off Jack Kirby art styles with by Rich Buckler. But I remember really enjoying the, <laughs> the Frightful Four here. With they'd recruited Thundra at this point instead of Medusa, but other than that, it was kind of the same. And this period where they were fighting the Submariner because they thought Sue was going to marry him after dumping poor Reed. Age of Ultron there. And then the whole storyline where there's a... I think this guy's name is Machismo. <laughs> there's a, a universe run by ultra-sexist men and a run, universe run by sort of Amazon-like women, and they eventually merge together to form the perfect union. There, that's probably more Machismo there. So a lot of Fantastic Four that all rings a bell in my memory, and I just assumed, and I rebought some of these. I just assumed I would never see them again. I guess being in these bags didn't harm them too much. There's a coverless one, still worth wrapping in plastic. Or Thomas Rich Buckler Joe Sinnott. Okay, might as well just keep going. Uh, new Gods. This was all wrapped in one bag together. Mr. Miracle. Number 11. I've definitely uh, bought, rebought every issue of Commandy, every issue of the New Gods. I wonder if this has my first issue of. Uh, Mr. Miracle or the New Gods in here, both of which kind of blew my mind at the time. I snip on things with my scissors. Oh, Atlas Comics, Morlock, 2001. This is a really water damaged copy, but I rebought it anyway. All of these things I have rebought. It's starting to kill me here. All the Kirby stuff I've rebought, like this uh, first issue special with Manhunter. Uh, Sandman, I've rebought all the Sandman issues. I think I probably only had one Sandman issue or two Sandman issues as a kid. Mr. Miracle. Now here I did not label, oh, it says 6P on it. Oh, that's under the bag, I must have bought that. Did I buy that in England and during our brief visit to England while we were in Switzerland or did I buy it in Switzerland? I'll never know. This one says 8P on it. Okay, the Hulk. Number 161. Hulk's number 67, 169 through 180, 186. Do that. 203 and 209. So it does not have the one valuable issue of the Hulk in here. Because I'm not going to. Cut those open right now. Oh, this is big, and it's not wrapped in a bag or anything. This is the very first issue of Superman I ever bought. And I, of course, have rebought it, but this is the actual issue. It's, it's covered in attic dust, actually. Great Kurt Swan stuff. Um, I actually own a very cheap art page that doesn't have Superman on the page from this issue. Yeah, which is kind of mind-blowing to think that I bought this back, what year would this be? I'm guessing 1971, the first year I started writing comics. 1972, I'm wrong. I bought this in 1972, and now in, uh, tw probably in 2019, I bought a page of original art from this issue. Much later, Firestorm came along, number one. Demon. Demon is a really awesome, especially art-wise comic. Commandies. 
Oh, now I've got even more Commandy in my collection. I have lots of multiple copies of Commandy anyway. When they're cheap, I just can't resist buying more. Oh, what's this? Okay, so a bunch of demon. Did I have all the demon? And now I have it. Bought it all again, probably at much higher prices. When I do the video showing, although I don't think as many people will be interested in it, when I do the a video showing the artwork that my mom found in the attic, which I know is only a sampling of the artwork I did back then, you'll see exactly how obsessed by comics I was. So just for my record, poor demon, back with the label, demon number five. Good to know. In case you can't read the number there, you can read it there. Number six. That's a cool cover. Number ten. Number fourteen. I think we got uh, at least two issues with the witch boy in it. Phew. Oh, some British comics, which I think I bought in Switzerland, or did I buy them in? I was just thinking that I want to, it's hard to find these like on eBay or what have you. There's uh, Metal Man, Teen Titans, that's quite a cover. Um, you know, Planet of the Apes. Which also has Kazar in it. I like how these British <laughs> weeklies would just put all kinds of things in in there. And I guess it maybe it was the American editorial, people like Scott Edelman deciding what actually went in these. What's this? Black Panther. And they would have um, artists draw new splash pages for most of the uh, things. So that's probably not Bill Graham. But then there's the Bill Graham art. I don't know if these were signed or credited anywhere. Or it could be the Bill Graham splash page. Let's see. That looks like the original splash page, but I don't know that. Oh, that does too. Oh, okay. The Avengers and the Savage Sword of Conan. You can't go wrong with that combo. Oh. Definitely the original splash page. They really though just gave you a little bit of each. It looks like just a few pages have come in and on to the Avengers. Oh, this is cool. Sideways. Double double comics for your money. I don't know how long that lasted. Eight. I like that. I guess I just like things that are different from other things. Nick Fury. He's so furious. What's this? Odds buying announcements to yawn with. <laughs> that that's just strange. Odds buying announcements. But, you know, judging by my conversation with uh, Scott Elderman, this was a bunch of teenagers working at the... Working at the... Uh, oh, at this point. I don't know why it tickles me so much. To, I'm sure as a kid, as a 14-year-old when I bought these, oh man, they're covered with dust, I thought this was great that I would get twice as much comic. So 
obviously I bought a lot of these. Probably bought them all at once. I can picture this um, bookstore somewhere in Geneva, not near where my apartment complex was, but where my friend took me. And I think the main goal was to go there and buy Playboys. They had used Playboys there. And then I discovered in the back they also had used British comics. Um, unfortunately, I only I don't know if they might have had non-Marvel, non-American comics there, but I was keen on getting some Marvel comics, so that's what I got. But the interesting part of the story is that his mother had once bought him a Playboy and said, there, you, here's a Playboy, now you can get it out of your system and you won't need to worry about getting Playboys. But of course, what he did is he snuck, he found the used bookstore with Playboys and snuck off to buy more because the one Playboy needed a lot more. I don't think he had an interest in comics. He, he was my science fiction friend though, um, which I didn't often have a friend who was into science fiction the way I was. So that looks like nice curvy art. I guess the humans under Kirby fought the Mandarin for a while. Okay, let's take a crack at this bag here. Coverless Batman, Superboy, one other page, spectacular. Ah, I remember this well. I thought this wanted thing was so cool, and little did I know the covers were great, but it was all um, reprints on the insides. I didn't know that, um, and I was pretty happy with it. I remember thinking the way Dr. Light was super cool. In fact, I feel like I tried imitating the way he was drawn in some picture, some uh, Gilkin drawing in this issue. But I don't know. Or maybe just from the cover. And here's another one of those wanteds. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. Stepping out of the distant past. There's Our Man. So I remember Our Man vividly. This must have been the comic that introduced me to Our Man. Can't find Our Man right now, but he's in here somewhere. There he is. I don't know why I thought Our Man was so cool, but I did. <clears throat> I'm going to assume this is all Fantastic Four and just not break it up right now because this video is going long. And here's some of the Marvel treasuries I had. Sometimes you'd like, did I dream this? Did I have the, Did I really have these comics when I was young? But I did. What will be in here? Is this the Magog stories? Something else. It's something else. I remember having a treasury with the Magog stories in it. But uh, that's not these, but they're cool. And Hulk stories, lots of uh, trimpy goodness. Nice. The Hulk was their biggest character for a while in the 70s, and so he has more Marvel Treasury editions than anyone else. That's, that's how I remember it anyway. And he... Um, and of course he had a very long running magazine when most of the Marvel magazines did not last long, except for Sab Sword. Um, so this one was reprints, it had a John Romita cover, but, and back cover, but inside was lots of curve. I don't think this was the first time I read the Galactus trilogy. I'm pretty sure I read the Galactus Trilogy in Marvel's Greatest Comics. But I could be wrong. Did they edit it down? I don't know. Possible man again. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thanks for sticking with me for a, a half an hour, looking into the past. No uh, Hulk 181, but <laughs> I only thought that would be fun if it was there. Because I know I had it as a kid, but um, 
I also distinctly remember thinking it was a disappointing comic. Okay, I'll, I'll be back as I always am. Talk to you later.